Hi, my name is Kate, I'm a physical therapist and in today's episode I will show you how to test sacroiliac joints, SI joints. Some of you asked me how I do it, so here you go. Why is testing sacroiliac joints so important? Because many of our patients, or we can even say most of our patients who come to our offices, do not have specific diagnosis. They come with lower back pain, but they cannot precise, they cannot exactly tell us where the pain is located. And they are pointing the spine, they are pointing sacrum, they are pointing iliac bones, but they are not sure. So it is our job as physiotherapists to be able to perform differential diagnosis. According to the rule that one test is not a test, uh, the literature gives us five tests for sacroiliac joints. These are five major tests and if we got three out of five positive, then we can say that we are dealing with this function of the sacroiliac joint. These tests are provocative, which means that the examiner is going to provoke some symptoms. In our case, it will be pain. So if our patient during the test is going to feel the pain, then the test is positive. Test number one, Patrick's test or Faber test. Patient lies supine on the table. The ipsilateral knee is flexed at 90 degrees and the hip is externally rotated with the ipsilateral foot resting on the contralateral knee. I am stabilizing the contralateral anterior superior iliac spine against the table and pushing the flexed knee down toward the table. The test is considered positive if the patient feels pain in the SI joint on the side where the knee was flexed. Test number two. Thigh thrust test or posterior shear test. Patient lies in a supine position. I am placing patient's hip and knee in flexion and I stabilize opposite anterior superior iliac spine with my other hand. I push down towards the axis of the femur. Resulting pain at the ipsilateral SI joint indicates a positive test. Test number three, Gunsland test. Patient is supine lying close to the side of the table with the leg on the side to be tested hanging over the edge of the table and the other hip and knee flexed to the chest. I stabilized flexed knee and apply a counter pressure to the knee of the hanging leg. The procedure is then repeated on the opposite side. This places stress on bilateral SI joints. The test is considered positive if the patient feels pain in their sacroiliac joint during testing. Test number four, compression test. Patient lies on the side facing away from the examiner. I apply a downward pressure to the ipsilateral iliac crest and anterior superior iliac spine. The test is considered positive if the patient feels pain in the SI joint on the ipsilateral side. Test number five, distraction test. Patient lies in a supine position. I apply slow and steady outward pressure to the left and right anterior superior iliac spine, spreading or distracting them apart. The test is considered positive if the patient feels pain in the SI joint area. This test is checking both SI joints in the same time. Okay, so you watched five major tests for sacroiliac joints. Uh, and as it was mentioned before, if three out of five are positive, then we uh, can say that we are dealing with sacroiliac joint dysfunction. But what is the most important over here is that these tests do not reveal the nature of the dysfunction and it can be both traumatic and non-traumatic. Uh, sacroiliac joint uh, can hurt from, for example, overload, but can also be painful in the case of diseases like ankylosing spondylitis or uh, psoriatic spondylitis. They both start from sacroiliac joints. So we need to be very cautious with performing um, some manual techniques on SI joints, uh, just basing on the fact that uh, sacroiliac joint tests are positive. That will be all. I hope you learned something today. Uh, if you like the video, leave me a thumb up, leave a comment. Uh, please feel free to subscribe and thank you for watching again. See you next time and have a great, great day.